Greetings Cardboard fans and welcome to the Dude Cave. I'm Jason and you are watching my weekly comic book reviews for the first week of April 2016. This week I've got 19 books to get through. Um, so yeah, main event as always is going to be the comics of the week where I take the 5 books I enjoyed the most and give them uh, each a review. First up however we are going to have the rapid fire roundup where I take the rest of the books and I give them a brief review, tell you what I liked, what I disliked about them and give them a rating out of 5 stars. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, let's get to that roundup. So here we go with the rapid fire roundup, I've got 14 books to get through so let's see how we can do this. I'm hoping for 14 minutes, so 14 books in 14 minutes that would be pretty good so let's see what we can do. Uh, first up we have Batgirl issue number 50 and this feels very much like a final issue. Uh, it, it rounds out, it concludes the comment arc but it felt like it felt like the end uh, in as much as even um, at the end of the book it's got end uh, and I really, it really felt like the creative team have set up their story, set up their book and now they're going to go off into the sunset and, and leave somebody else to take over and I, I'd be interested what they do the next two issues, but if it, if they're just going to end up being filler, maybe ending it on a high like this would be the best thing to do. The story itself is really good, rounds up everything nicely, um, concludes everything beautifully done. Um, I like some of the layouts of the art. We get there's a nice moment with this map. I don't know how well you can see that on my rubbish camera, um, and also like the individual battles between the villains and the heroes. I like how they're, they're like the intro into those. You've got that kind of moment, um, and so yeah, I really liked how they managed all of that. Yeah, uh, I thought that was really well done. My only gripe with there, there are so many artists on this book, as you can see from the cover with the amount of names. So many artists and and other like inkers and stuff. And it's like, you kind of think, if this is how many people it takes for DC to put together a monthly book, how the hell are they going to manage to book out two books a month? But anywho, this was a really good conclusion, um, and I'd give it four stars out of five. So next up, we have a, a Detective Comics issue number 51. Um, this is very much his filler. Um, it's set during the time with Jim Gordon is still Batman and some old unarmed army buddy comes back and he's got some dark secret from his army days and he has to go back to Afghanistan to try and help his teammates. It kind of reminds me of the one story that they did in uh, True Blood with the one guy who had been in the army. It kind of reminds me of that but when we kind of get to what's going on it doesn't seem quite the same deal. Um, it, I did have a kind of problem with this in that how come Gordon seems to be the only member of his army buddies that's left the army? Well, surely some other people would have left the army, but it seems everybody, they're all, you know, that, that, that he, so that seemed really strange, that not only were they all still in the army, but they were all still in Afghanistan, you know, uh, that seemed very strange. However, the story was, was fun, I like the way Gordon is written. And it was an interesting mystery that Diner develops nicely. Um, so, yeah, it was an enjoyable read. Um, and if you're a Jim Gordon fan, I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, give Detective Comics issue 51 four stars out of five. Uh, so, our final DC book of, the, of the, the Rapid Fire Roundup. It is The Coming of the Superman, issue number three. And some more Neil Adams goodness. I love this, the vintage feel to this. It reminds me so much of the Superman I read as a teenager. So I really like it for that and I kind of wonder would I enjoy this as much if I didn't have that emotional connection. I'm liking the mystery, there's some things we still don't know the answers to but I've got faith that Neil Adams will round everything out by issue 5 and, and of, of like, oh is it, is it 5? No it's 6, 6 issue series it is. So by issue 6 we'll have all the answers. Um, there are little things that niggle me, I, I feel Superman's a bit too snappy in this to be Superman. I also feel that uh, Luther here, I, I didn't like how cowardly he was when around Superman, yet he's, he's perfectly, he attempts perfectly calmly to double cross Darkseid, and I'm kind of like, Luther's a very intelligent man, he knows Superman is to strip moral code he would not kill. So Luther's more likely to try and push Superman's buttons than try, dare with Darkseid, you know this guy will have no reservation of killing you. 
So you kind of think he'd be more nervous around Darkseid than Superman, but that's only a nickel nickel. I am really enjoying this. Um, look forward to it every month and I give Superman the coming of the Superman issue number 3 4 stars out of 5 so moving into Marvel now we have Black Panther issue number 1 and this was really good um, it was I don't really know what I was expecting but whatever I was expecting it was different I, we introduced to Wakanda and it's kind of like the fallout of all what's happened in previous books over the years with Wakanda going through some bad times in recent years and kind of the deal with that and T'Challa is once again, you know, ruler of, of the of the planet of Wakanda. But there's stuff going on, there's a political kind of struggle and kind of I really liked like what's going on here and that it's a quite a complex situation with many different fa fa uh, factions and I really liked that. I thought it was well written, I thought it was well drawn. Um and a really good first issue that really lays out things nicely and yeah definitely excited to see where else they're going to go with this I also like the stuff we get in the back introducing our creative team on the last page which I always like that, that's really cool I, the, the the process of putting the book together always really fascinates me so that that's super cool uh, we get an interview with the, the artist as well um, and I, I kind of like the way that the, the, these pages are structured as well as we get like the first letters page um, and even like when we open up the book um, you know, you you have like the setup. We have that kind of deal there, and as always, like the book, the front of the book introduces the Black Panther, and then we kind of go into the story. Um, I really like this. I like this a lot. Um, I liked everything about this book. It's a four ninety nine book, and what I really liked is they gave a story, and that there was content in the back that you really felt you got value for money. Really great first issue. Really enjoyed this. Look forward to seeing what we're going to do next. Give Black Panther issue number one five stars out of five. So next up we have a Black Widow issue number two. Um, Mark Wade, Chris Samney doing this book. A creative team that I absolutely love. First issue was all action and uh, very little kind of if you will story. It was basically just one long action scene of of uh, Black Widow getting away from Shield as Shield will trying to take down Black Widow and you kind of think well what's all that about? This book kind of takes us a step back and shows us how we got there and what's going on with Black Widow and why she did what she did. And I really like it. It throws a real emotional heart into the book, you know. Um, rather than it just being all these action scenes, they do it. And Sam and Wade pull it off so well and they work so well together that it's just it's pure, pulled off beautifully. Really enjoyed this issue um, and I'm really excited to see where we're going to go with the book. And I give issue to a Black Widow, 5 stars out of 5. We then have Contest of Champions, issue number 7. This kicks off a brand new arc which sees a crossover as the Ultimates are brought into the book. Um, in the previous issues we saw Maestro. Uh, he was bought uh, by the Collector to kind of take part in the Contest of Champions. But he outfoxed the Collector and now has the power and he's, he's got his own battle world and he has the Punisher of 2099. And the former kind of people that were fighting in the Contest of Champions are now being executed one at a time by the Punisher. And Maestro is trying to like get trying to use his powers to create people or, or bring people to, to back a world, but he can't quite get into work and so far he's only been able to bring old Rick Jones to the to where he's at. And so and there's some really great dialogue between the two. I like the organic way that they're introducing the ultimates into the story. There's part of the story with this character called Gunnar that was killed by Maestro, and Maestro stole some of his, his some of his armor for something that he needed to overcome the, the collector. And he's uh, and kind of another South Korean superhero called White Fox. I think they named White Fox. Um, I I'm, I know it's gonna. I should have written this down or something, but it's or, oh no, we've got it here. Yeah, White Fox, she's like this secret, uh, South Korean secret agent. She's gone to the Ultimates to help, to get their help in finding what happened to Gunnar. And kind of this leads them to Battle World. I like the organic way that that's kind of been a piece of the story with her investigating what happened to Gunnar. That's been around since the beginning of this series. So I like that, that, that as this has led to this, so it feels very organic. 
Um, really enjoyed this. The art is really good as well. Some really interesting characters in the book. And I'm. this is one of those books you kind of look at and you think, yeah, yeah, I'll give that a miss. But I actually really pleased I jumped onto this book and really enjoyed it. And give Contest to Champions issue number seven, four stars out of five. We then have Deadpool issue number nine. Uh, this was great. Deadpool has gone after Sabretooth because he thinks Sabretooth killed his father. But it wasn't Sabretooth, it was Deadpool. And But Sabretooth was there. So he goes after him. We get a nice big battle between Sabretooth and Deadpool, which is really cool. Um, as like the, It's a brutal battle because you've got two heroes here, two characters who can heal. So they really pull out all stops to make a really cool fight. Um, we get something interesting going on with his friend Scully. Um, that I'm looking forward to us coming back to that. And, you know, all in all, I'm really enjoying this. It's an enjoyable read. Not that much substance yet. Um, I, there's a nice moment between Magneto and Sabretooth, which is cool. And I'm really interested to see what's going to go down between Sabretooth and Deadpool. Because kind of the way it reads, is, is Sabretooth going to take the blame so that Deadpool doesn't have to have the memory that he killed his dad? Um, so that, it's going to be interesting how that's going to go. But I enjoyed this a lot. I thought it was a a lot of fun and to give Deadpool issue number nine four stars out of five we then have Empress issue number one um, this is written by Mark Miller with art by uh, Stuart Immonen really enjoyed this um, it, I like the idea that there's a civilization that lived on earth like 65 million years ago I like that idea of that story um, the, the first issue not a whole load of substance it kind of is very much an action pack story and i liked it for that i liked that the fact that it was action packed and kind of it lays out some stuff but uh, and we have a one flashback that kind of starts laying some groundwork but very much this is just an action issue to get you into to the thing and to introduce you to this world and to what's happening i'm super interested to see what happens next um kind of we kind of get the idea that the that the main character that the main guy is a bad guy and like that this woman she wants to get away from him for the good of her children and I'm really interested to see where she's going to go and yeah oh, it's, it was a really good first issue that it didn't blow me away but it did enough that made me want to find out what happens next and I think for every book that's the aim and so I'd give Empress issue number one four stars out of five we then have Invincible Iron Man, issue number eight. Really enjoyed this. Um, we have Iron Man's gone to Japan, He's teaming up with um, Spider-Man to try and find a War Machine, who is over there investigating something. Um, and it's kind of really bad, like when they get there, what this is. I like the issue; it flows nicely. Uh, there's, there's a nice bit with Friday and Mary Jane that I really like that interaction. And you're kind of wondering what's going on there. I liked the dialogue and the banter between Spider-Man and Iron Man. I thought that worked really well. Um, and I thought Rhodey was written well. The only negative to the book. Because um, the story is really good. And it's an interesting villain for Iron Man to go up against. Um, so I really like that. The only kind of niggle that I would have with the art. I just I When I looked and saw that it was Mike Diagato. I could not believe it. Because... The art isn't the standard of consistent art I would expect from my dear ghetto. Um, so yet yeah, the art was disappointing, but the rest of the book I really enjoyed. So I'd give it four stars out of five. We then have Star Wars Poe Dameron, uh, issue number one. The main story here is really good. Phil Noto's art is beautiful. It seems to be a thing at the moment that a lot of artists are starting to like ink and colour their own books as well. And Phil Noto's in one, one of those people. And kind of you know when you open a Phil Noto book because he has a kind of a way of colouring his books as, as well as a way of of drawing it. So I really like that. Um, the story is set before Force Awakens and it's kind of how the, the guy who had the map to Luke Skywalker, how they found him. So I like that and it introduces, uh, I think it was, they were called Black Squadron. Um, so I liked how we introduced the Doe's characters and that was really cool. And kind of that the history, we're kind of getting a little bit more kind of teasers to the history that's set between Jedi and Force Awakens. 
thought Poe Dameron was written really well and I really like the story and where we end up is great. My only niggle would be the backup. I, I didn't really see the point of it. It was written by a different person and it very much, it, it's a BB-8 story uh, and it, it's about him trying to bring these two people that fancy each other together. And it's an okay story but when I've spent 4 99 on a book I want content that is either going to add to the main story or more the main story or extra content that kind of makes you gives you insight into the book and into the creators or even like special stuff their short stories that kind of are a celebration of the character or add to the story that that's the deal I'm looking for and that really added nothing and I'd much rather paid a dollar less than have that all that extra stuff that extra bit at the back um, so yeah but I enjoyed the main book and I definitely give Poe Dameron four stars out of five. We then have the Uncanny Avengers issue number eight. Uh, this was not only the most disappointing part of standoff so far, it was also the weakest issue of Uncanny Avengers we've had so far. Uh, basically the whole gist of the issue is they've been captured and they've all forgotten who they are and are living in Pleasant Hill with new identities. And Rogue's the first one to kind of wake up because of her a training from Professor Xavier. That sort of it's happened to her mind and it, she starts to come round. Um, so the whole issue is basically her running around, finding everyone in Pleasant Hill. Uh, and it seems to be that everybody sh that, that is in Pleasant Hill is an Avenger. And she kind of gets them changed back. So... <sighs> It was just, it was just, it was a kind of issue that didn't really advance anything. Um, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was okay. So I'd give it three stars out of five. Um, we then have our final Marvel book. Uh, we have the Vision issue number six. This was re as always really good. I'm really enjoying a Walder's art. I think it works really well on the book. Um, and kind of. What I this issue is kind of like it comes out what his wife has done, so you get how the how is the vision going to respond to this, and I really were intrigued and excited to see that, and it plays out beautifully. The last page as well is a real jaw dropper, but all through the book, just a real great sense of foreboding and a real great mood, and, and just really a story, well told story and. King's just doing a really bang up job with this and proving his moniker is one of the most exciting new writers out there and it's your vision issue number six five stars out of five we then have a doctor who um 12 doctor adventures a year two this kicks off um the first part of a new story as the doctor is taking gabby and her friend cindy um off on a bit of a holiday They've been through a lot in the last story arc, so we believe, yeah, let's go on holiday. What we get is a really good story with potential witches, a monster, um, and all kinds of paranormal stuff. And really good stuff. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really, really good. Some of it's going on with Gabby as well, which I'm finding interesting. Um, yeah, this was just really good stuff. Really fun story. And I'd easily give it five stars out of five. It was everything I wanted in a Doctor Who comic. We then have uh, the Doctor Who, the 12th Doctor Adventures, Year 2, issue number 4. Love that cover. That would definitely be my cover of the week. Really like the cover there. Um, the story inside, really good. It concludes the whole Sea Devil story we've been having um, as they're trying to kind of basically destroy Scotland. Um, and uh, I like this because it's kind of like the whole story felt very much... Where like the, the the tenth Doctor story felt very much like a fourth Doctor story, this feels very much like a classic Doctor Who story as well. Um, I really enjoyed this. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It wraps things up nicely. That and it, some places it's a bit convenient, but on the whole, I like how this wraps up the story. And it does feel like I, I feel I like the tone that the, most of these Doctor Who books have been written with. And this, this was just another absolute enjoyable issue. And it'd give Doctor Who, um, Year 2, uh, 12 Doctor Adventures Year 2, issue number 4, 4 stars out of 5. So that's my roundup. Just a, a bit longer than I intended. Um, nearly 19 minutes for 14 books. Not that bad, I suppose. We will get better. Um, so next up, it's time for the main event. It's the Comics of the Week. 
So here we are now with my comics of the week. Um, this week was a particularly tough week. There were quite a few good books, you know. On another week, Black Panther, Black Widow, um, and Vision could have all been in, in comic of the week. Uh, so yeah, it was a good week, which I love when we have those difficult weeks because it shows that we've got a lot of good comics. So we're kicking things off with the only book I got from Valiant this week. It is Ninjak issue number 14. Um, I know it's kind of dark. My camera isn't very good. Um, so I don't know how well you can see that cover. Uh, but this kicks off a new story called The Siege of King's Castle. And basically what happens here is somebody is trying to take Ninjak down. But like... They destroy his, his castle with him inside it, destroying, they, they kind of uh, deny him, he kind of has no access to his bank accounts, um, all of his weapons have been destroyed, and you know, he's, he's been completely wiped off um, the, you know, the agency that he works for, he's completely been wiped off their records, they have no record of him, and it's really, really, you know, what's happened here. They've really done a number on him, and he's basically out on his own. And uh, nobody that he can trust, nobody can rely on, and he's got to get to the bottom of who's doing this and kind of stop it. Really strong first chapter to this book. Um, I, it was just great seeing him. Like he's coming back from the mission we we saw him on last time, um, and it just great stuff. As as basically everything just starts going wrong, and you see how deep who's done this to him has done this. So I really loved that is really cool i love the mystery um so i think the main the regular cover kind of i think pretty much gives away who it is who's done this um but yeah i i really liked what happened here in the backup the last files it's kind of dealing with his parents because they were super secret agents as well kind of deals with who they were and when they how they came to the decision that they wanted a child all in all, this was just great, great stuff. If you like Ninja at all, this is definitely worthwhile jumping on. Or you like Super Hate Agent kind of stuff, this is definitely worth jumping on. Um, as always, Valiant do a great job here, giving you like recapping what you need to know. And then we kind of get the main story as you can kind of see the damage that gets done to, to his home. Great stuff uh, from start to finish. Really thoroughly enjoyed this, and I'm super excited to see the rest of this arc. And I give Ninja issue number 40, five stars out of five, and it's one of my comics of the week. Uh, so next up, we have Justice League: The Dark Side Special number one. Um, I going into this, I was a bit of a grumpy pants. Kind, of, I was feeling like this is like we had that one month where we had the four specials. And it kind of was feeling there's too many specials. Just give us the main story. That's what we want right now. But, but when I sat down and read this, I felt such an idiot. Because Jeff Jones does such a great job with this. Is it really fleshes out the Grail character. And really it gives us a lot more insight into her. Um, also Power Ring. Kind of we get a double story going on. We get basically the origin here of Grail. And kind of what happened, to how she was born the same night as Wonder Woman. And kind of all what happened to her and her life and her motivations for where she's at now. So that was really cool. Uh, and I really like that. We also get powering um, in what's happening inside powering as Jessica Cruz is trying to escape and gain control over powering. Um, and we kind of get a bit more insight into that. I really enjoyed this. Two characters, we, you know, not that mainly. They've had parts to play, but we don't know that much or not. And they take a really great opportunity here, while we've sized up in the main story, to kind of flesh out those characters. And I really loved this. I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, even though we did have quite a few artists on the book, it, it ended up being a really enjoyable read. And, yeah, easily one of my comics of the week. So, yeah, just leak the Dark Side War, uh, special number one. We get five stars out of five for me. It's one of my comics of the week. Uh, so next up we have Superman issue number fifty one. Uh, this kicks off the brand new story, um, Super League. If you do not want to get anything spoiled, I would kind of turn away now because I I'm gonna have to spoil something major in this book. Um, and I kind of like 
So if you're gonna, if you're spo if you're a spoiler phobe, I'd turn away now. Uh, so basically, the book opens up with this one-page picture of Superman, um, saying, "I'm dying." Um, and basically, the effects, it's the effects of what's happened to him. And we kind of get laid out here the, the, the three kind of big things that happened to him um, that have kind of affected him and now means he's dying. And we get this really emotional scene where he goes back to Smallville and tells Layla Lang and a real emotional scene with them as she's kind of telling him her. And then at the end he goes to see Lois. Um, so I re this issue, while there isn't that much kind of like action in it, it does a lot of heart and I really love that. Miko Yanin on art as well, one of my favourite artists and I'm so pleased to see him on such a big book because he deserves it because he's such a fantastic artist and to see him draw Superman is brilliant and he really conveys the emotion of the story that you know Peter Tomasi is laying out um, and does a fantastic job. Uh, I love this. We have this other side story going on of these kind of other people, these other people that I'm, I believe will end up being linked. Um, there's, 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 some, there's some great moments as well throughout the book. Uh, we've got him here, like being Superman, uh, going around saving various different people. Beautifully drawn uh, by Tomasi, uh, by um, Yanim, sorry. Uh, the, the whole book is just a real, if you love Superman and you've read like, you a long time fan but haven't been a fan of the new 52 stuff this is superman done right and the best i've seen superman written and done drawn in the new 52 and it's just a shame that it's this character swan song um it does make sense to me because i felt looking at some of the images for rebirth that that looked like the pre new 52 superman who we know is alive and well in the new 52 so i kind of wondered was something going to happen with him becoming superman again and that looks like the way we're going to go um, with this character being killed off and of course if he dies then of course Clark Kent dies with him and the, the Superman can go back to having a secret identity so that it all works out and so yeah I, I like that and this definitely looks like it's going to take him out on a high really enjoyed this stuff a really great start to this this um, I think it's going to run all month through all the Superman books this Super League story but a really good start and I like as well that we have like a number one on there to kind of illustrate that this is the first part of the Super League story so I, I think that's a really clever thing that they've done there um, really great stuff and I give Superman issue number 51 5 stars out of 5 and it's one of my comics of the week a really great read well worth checking out if you're a Superman fan uh, jump into Marvel now, um, the next comic of the week it is Old Man Logan, issue number 4. Um, Lemire Saratino are just killing it on this book. This issue, uh, Wolverine, or Old Man Logan, comes into contact with Old Man Cap. And I love this, as kind of like Logan is kind of slowly coming to the realisation that this isn't his timeline. That, you know, the world that he has got here isn't the world that he knows, you know, um, that he's dead on this world, that Captain America is old on this world. So I I really like th that slow realization that yes, maybe this isn't my, this, the future that I knew. And what I also really liked is how this ties into the first issue of Extraordinary X-Men and kind of makes sense of where Wolverine was, where Logan was at when they approached him. So I liked that as well. I thought that was a real nice touch in there as well. As always, the art by Sarantino is just gorgeous and unique. And, you know, uh, all the way through the book, the layouts and everything. I, I, I just love... how he does it all. You know, as always, there's some great, great layouts. Um, great stuff, but also some great character stuff done by Lemire. I, I all of, like I say, as you can probably pick up from what I'm saying, I really enjoyed the book. I like what they're doing with Logan here, and I thought it was a nice little wrinkle as well. Is that like you tie in with um, the first issue of of Extraordinary X Men? Um, I'm really interested and excited to see where we're going to go with the book next. 
Uh, but this was a fantastic star, and I give issue 4 of Old Man Log a 5 out of 5, and will definitely one of my comics of the week. So my final comic of the week for this week, it is Uncanny X-Men, issue number 6. Uh, this is the second part of the Apocalypse Wars. I don't know, though. I don't know if it is the second part, or if it's just a side kind of part, just part 1. Um, because it doesn't really get into the main part. But basically what's ha been happening in the book, um, as they kind of re remind you in the beginning, is they fought the Dark Riders, who were kind of something to do with Apocalypse. So this issue kind of ja right, riles that up. Uh, there's something going on with Angel, and Cyclops kind of is worried is the return of Dark Angel. So her and Magneto go to this town to investigate things, which takes a bad turn. We have Sabretooth and M go to um, meet Callisto, and of course there's some bad history going back to the fall of the mutants between Callisto and Sabretooth, and they ha Sabretooth has to deal with what he did during the fall of the mutants and that whole thing. Uh, I like the, the nods in this book to the past, I thought that was really, really, really good, and I really enjoyed the, that. Um, I love the kind of teaser of what's going on with Dark Angel. Um, and that is possible return and Cyclops kind of fear. I like how Magneto is written and how Sabretooth have written and the relationship between Monique and Sabretooth is really interesting. All in all this was a lot of fun. A really good read. I was on the edge of my seat all the way through. The other real surprise of the book is on art we have Kev Ken Lashley and Lashley does a really good job with the art. I really enjoyed how um, he drew this book, um, you know, they're like this page here that kind of goes through the history of Angel. He's beautifully done, and um, I'm trying to kind of pick out pages that won't spoil too much. And yeah, just the whole book, I don't know, my lighting's not too good, so I don't know how much of that you can see. But the book is just beautifully drawn, and it's a nice change of pace from Greg Land. And I don't like to keep hating on Greg Land. But my kind of deal with Greg Land is I didn't see his art until I think it was the Kieran Gillen Iron Man series. And that must have been about 2013, which was three years ago. And in those three years, he'd be given Hobbit high profile books. And each book he's come to, he has the same problems. He hasn't improved his art, he hasn't improved his style, despite the great opportunities he's been given. And that's why I constantly hate on Greg Land. Um, so that's the deal with Greg Land. It's, it's more his lack of kind of improvement because he's not a bad artist. There are sometimes his art looks good. It just when it comes to conveying emotion, it comes to making his characters look different, especially the females. You know, and that really handicaps his lack of ability to kind of tell a story and to tell emotion. It really handicaps the writer, and you kill him burnt here. Has been doing a great job writing the series and how he writes these characters, he works really well at. And so, you know, to have him so handicapped by the art, and it was so great here to see the art be able to tell the story in an effective manner, and that was brilliant. We get a backup which kind of deals with Magneto getting his powers back, and um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that as well. I thought that was a really good read, and, and kind of kind of ties into the main story as well um all in so yeah i really enjoyed this i'm loving the a lot of the x-men books right now and if uncanny x-men would get definitely um issue number what number was it again issue number six gets a definite five out of five from me and it's one of my comics still so that's me done for another week i will be back at some point the end of this week the middle to the end of this week with my comic haul weekly review, uh, video where I show you the books I picked up. Um, I then will be back next week, um, hopefully on Monday, fingers crossed, uh, with my another weekly comic review. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please give me those thumbs up if you've enjoyed my video so I know you're enjoying what you, you're seeing. Um, as I've said, I will be back. I um, hope you've all had a good week and you were well. Um, I, all leaves me to say is that I've been Jason. This has been my weekly comic reviews. Uh, keep reading and bye for now.